Okay, so welcome. Uh, this is the uh, Texas PACE for Service Providers Part 2. Uh, we've had Part 1 uh, last month. And this is part of the TPA's new T5, the third Thursday at 2 training series. It is the third Thursday of the month. It is 2 o'clock. It's actually 2.07 or, or so, so we'll go ahead and get started. <clears throat> My name is Dub Taylor. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for the Texas PACE Authority. I joined TPA uh, in February of this year, uh, so I've been on board for about three, three and a half months, not a very long time, but I uh, have spent the past uh, two decades running the State Energy Conservation Office, where we operated a number of technical assistance, engineering uh, services, and uh, project financing programs. So uh, a lot of experience in the public sector and in the private sector. Uh, prior to joining the state, I was in the commercial real estate business, property management, property appraisal, and property tax consulting. So worked both sides of the aisle, so to speak. As I mentioned, we have a new series, a training series called T5. Uh, like so many organizations these days that are trying to uh, provide service in the COVID-constrained environment, uh, we are uh, we are doing the same, and we have a series of webinars that we've started. April 16th, uh, many of you, I think, probably attended that. Uh, that was really an introduction to Texas, Texas Pace for service providers. We do record these, and the YouTube link for that webinar is posted here, and this is also on our website. I'll show you that later. Uh, today, we're part two of the service provider training. And then uh, June 18th next month will be uh, shift a bit, and the focus there will be Texas Pace for capital providers, so away from engineering and contractors into more of the lender and capital provider side of the equation. So the agenda for today, I'm going to recap uh, the uh, Pace, Pace in Texas, Pace overview. We did a deeper dive last month, but a bit of recap if you missed that. We are going to do a deeper dive into technical standards, uh, how those came about, why they're important, uh, introduce a new report template. Uh, this is something that uh, you probably have not seen before. Uh, again, go over the requirements of the independent third party review, which is critical to PACE, and then uh, talk about uh, sort of next steps and then also resources that are available for you. So with that, what is Texas PACE? Well, Property Assessed Clean Energy Financing. Uh, financing is not part of the PACE acronym, but that's really what it is. It's a way of paying for capital projects with no money out of pocket, providing 100% financing for certain types of projects, energy efficiency, energy conservation, distributed generation, water conservation. And it's available for commercial, industrial, and multifamily properties, uh, not public, uh, but uh, commercial privately owned properties. It's repaid through a special property assessment or secured by through a property assessment on, that uh, exists over the useful life of the improvements. And uh, it is state authorized. Uh, state law created PACE in Texas. Local governments op enable and operate it. And then our group, the Texas PACE Authority, administers that on behalf of local governments. It's a voluntary and open market program. So any commercial property owner, industrial property owner within a PACE district uh, can access uh, the PACE structure. Any capital provider can uh, finance a project, assuming they meet certain uh, thresholds. And then also uh, any contractor or service provider uh, can do the work. So there's not a pre-qualification system. It's open. As I mentioned to our group, the Texas PACE Authority, we sort of sit in the middle of all this and help facilitate these projects. Uh, local governments, which create the PACE districts, typically don't want to create PACE departments, uh, so they bring in a PACE administrator, like us, the Texas PACE Authority. So we represent the local governments and work on their behalf. Property owners participate by uh, evaluating their needs and, and uh, seeing if uh, PACE is the right fit to help them move projects forward. Again, capital providers uh, provide the funding and then service providers do the work. So we sit in this in the center and sort of this uh, like a referee uh, type role uh, without a direct stake in the project uh, from a capital service or ownership uh, perspective. 
So what we're talking about when we talk about PACE are essentially any sort of permanent improvements that uh, reduce energy, water consumption, and costs, uh, or uh, provide energy, distributed energy on the customer side of the meter. So in the energy category, you see there's uh, chillers, boilers, uh, there are uh, renewable energy systems, a lot of different things like that. Uh, and on the water side, uh, high efficiency water heating systems, uh, alternative water uh, on site, uh, high efficiency irrigation system, uh, lots of lots of different things. This is not uh, the total list, but these are examples of the types of things that uh, PACE can fund. And if I, if I can, uh, again, uh, bottom left of each of these slides, you'll see, please uh, keep uh, your mics muted and your video off, if you will. Uh, thank you for that. So why Texas PACE? Well, it's a way of improving assets, uh, uh, commercial real estate, industrial assets, in a budget neutral and cash flow positive way in many cases. It lowers utility usage and costs. It has many, many benefits, increases net operating income, and uh, this is all beneficial, uh, obviously, to the owners. And if you compare PACE to conventional financing, on con the conventional side on the left, what you see is typically in a uh, equipment loan that's a commercial loan. Uh, the term of that loan is, is a fairly short time. And so uh, you're upside down from a cash flow standpoint until that loan is repaid. You do begin receiving utility savings or realizing those during the repayment time, but not at the same level as the repayment. So uh, it takes a while before you start realizing uh, increased net operating income. Uh, with PACE, because the payment can be stretched out over a much longer period of time, uh, aligned with the useful life of the measures that PACE is financing, then you can be cash flow positive day one. Very appealing. And uh, because of the assessment nature of PACE, uh, these loans and the financing are considered to be more secure than a conventional uh, equipment loan. If you think about it, uh, a bank that may lend a, uh, an owner uh, funding for HVAC systems, uh, if that owner defaults on that loan, it's very unlikely the bank is going to come in and uh, remove and disassemble and resell the equipment in surplus. So it's really an unsecured loan. Uh, PACE uh, provides the security that allows for that longer term and lower interest. So it really is a win-win-win. Property owners uh, improve their assets, have lower energy bills, contractors. Uh, this is a, a new opportunity for business. Uh, it's you that uh, uh, many of you on the line are contractors that are doing the work. Uh, lenders, a low risk uh, means of, uh, of, of lending money and, and uh, developing relationships with new customers. At the state level, a number of sort of global benefits there. And then at the community level, uh, a lot of economic development opportunities that PACE supports. So really a win-win-win. And if you look at PACE by the numbers, apologizing for the formatting here, this is a, a <coughs> apparently a Mac versus Windows uh, situation. Uh, the, uh, the circle on the left, the pie chart, uh, shows the breakout of PACE projects by property type. So uh, as you see, most of this is commercial, uh, retail, some hotel, nonprofit, commercial office, a little bit of multifamily, and a little bit of industrial. The types of measures that have been financed through PACE thus far, uh, over half energy efficiency, about a third water conservation, and then 12% uh, distributed generation. The total PACE investment in Texas has really hit an inflection point. So from 2016 to 2018, there were about $50 million in projects. In 2019 alone, there were about $50 million in projects. So it really doubled. And 2020, if you look at the top of that, that bar, you'll see a little green slice on the top. Uh, there was uh, a surge of activity right after the first of the year. As with everything else, a little bit of a lull during COVID. However, we have seen transactions even during COVID and there are more in the pipeline. So we expect uh, even after uh, the COVID impacts uh, that we've seen, as with everyone else, that we'll pick, pick back up and uh, 
finish 2020 strong and continue into 2021 the same way. So it really is, uh, really is moving. And as far as where PACE is available, uh, more of the state, uh, again, this is a locally enabled program. So a commissioner's court, a county judge, a mayor and city council need to take affirmative action to create a PACE program. These are the areas of the state where they have done that and where uh, they have brought us in the Texas PACE Authority to operate the program for them. Most recently, the city of San Antonio, uh, just, uh, uh, just, just in April, so the newest entrant. So about a, over $100 million of investment today and uh, more than half the population of the state is covered by one of these active PACE districts. So how it works, you may have seen this slide or something like it before. <clears throat> the process goes like this. <clears throat> the building owner says, maybe this makes sense for me. Uh, let's take a look. I bring in a contractor. Uh, we find a project. We identify, identify a capital provider, and then we apply to the program. And then there are steps after that that have to deal more with the, the legal and financial aspects. The areas that I have circled in red <clears throat> are the areas that directly involve contractors and engineers. So these are the phases that uh, most of you on the, on the call today or on the webinar today would be most involved in. So moving on to the next part of the agenda, the technical standards, and this is really the focus of today's webinar. So how do we get here? And questions come up sometimes about the technical standards and, and the basis for that. So here's a <clears throat> little bit of history. Uh, the Keeping Pace in Texas is an organization that uh, was formed to advocate for and get Pace, commercial and industrial Pace authorized in the state of Texas. Uh, this is back in, in 2013, 2012, 2013 timeframe. Well, they were successful. Uh, they worked with the legislature. They got the Pace bill enacted and everyone cheered and then said, now what? Uh, well, it all happened so quickly that uh, a lot of the details on how exactly this program works in Texas weren't yet developed. So into that void, <clears throat> the Texas, the Keeping Pace in Texas uh, put together what's called Pace in a Box. And these are uh, uniform standards and guidelines for use throughout the state. Without this, uh, as local governments and cities can create Pace programs on their own, there could have been literally thousands of different variations of PACE programs. So uh, this, this uh, common uh, set of guidance was created and that has become the standard in the state. Uh, our organization, the Texas PACE Authority, then uh, took that uh, a level deeper and created program guidelines, which are really kind of the operations manual, the how-to. Uh, so at the high level, enabled at the state level, uh, more details and guidance through PACE in a Box and then program guidelines uh, by us, the administrator. <clears throat> and if you look at what happened in the legislation, the enabling legislation, uh, there's a couple of key things I want to point out. One, uh, definitions that are important, qualified improvements. Uh, this is in state law, a permanent improvement fixed to real property. Uh, so that is a key qualifier and it is intended to decrease water energy consumption, and it has to be on the customer side of the meter. So those are really three key things in the definitions under state law to keep in mind. And then later, the qualified project is the installation of such an improvement, and then real property here is defined again as privately owned commercial and industrial uh, or residential with five dwelling units or more, five units or more. So not, not public and not, uh, not residential. On the technical review side, <clears throat> this is where uh, all of this originates. So under state law, again, a program established uh, here, all the PACE programs have to meet these standards. So for each qualified project, there has to be an energy and water baseline conducted, uh, and then a projection of savings from that baseline. There has to be a verification that the, that the proposed improvements meet the requirements of a qualified project. Uh, it has to be conclusive. And then after it's completed, there has to be a verification done that everything was properly completed and operated as intended. Uh, the baseline energy or water review and then the verification review after completion uh, has to be done also by an independent third party. 
This is all in state law. So the next step, the Pace in a Box Toolkit. Uh, working groups were formed to look at different aspects of how Pace would operate. Uh, program design, underwriting, funding, education and marketing, last but not least, technical standards. And that is the basis for uh, our program guide. All of this you can see if you want to go to the web link there, Keeping Pace in Texas, Pace in a Box, it's all uh, publicly available. So then what Texas Pace Authority did was uh, created, again, program guide and technical standards for use in administering uh, PACE uh, throughout the state where we serve. These were modeled after uh, STECO, the State Energy Conservation Office's Lone Star Guidelines. Uh, SECO has operated that program for at least 30 years, and I, I know has funded at least half a billion dollars of projects with zero defaults, so it's really the gold standard. Uh, also, it pulled in the uh, ICP protocols uh, and then also common standards that engineers are, are familiar with, IPMVP for measurement verification approaches, ASHRAE standards, ASTM. So not looking to reinvent the wheel, but to assemble uh, the best components that existed into something that could address uh, the PACE requirements. These are all available on our website, circled there in red, and you can go down and uh, download the program guide in English and in Spanish. So the process from a technical standpoint is the contractor first uh, conducts an energy or water analysis. Uh, this can be an engineer uh, or it can be the contractor, it doesn't have to be an engineer. Uh, and then it moves through the process and we'll go through each of these steps. So the energy and water analysis, each project has to have energy and water analysis that, that, is, uh, that conforms to our guidelines. Again, performed by an engineer or contractor in two key components, the baseline analysis to understand the unimproved situation or the current state of affairs, and then the projected savings analysis to understand that delta, that benefit, savings benefit uh, between the two. This is all recorded in an, in an energy and water assessment report. And that's uh, something that uh, to this point, uh, we've sort of left up to the engineers and contractors uh, to develop, <clears throat> excuse me, which creates some challenges in the review because you get them in a lot of different ways. So uh, what we've done is created a new report template. Uh, this is uh, still uh, really in draft form. Uh, you're seeing this for the first time uh, by attending the webinar today. And uh, if you have comments or concerns or uh, anything else, you can email me and let me know. Uh, we're hoping to get this finished and formalized uh, by next week, uh, drop it into probably a, a, a PDF type format with editable fields uh, to make it easier, uh, but again, to provide consistency both in the way that these uh, reports are developed, but for more efficient review by the independent third party. So I'm going to attempt to, to uh, <clears throat> move screens here and uh, go to that report. And wait for it to catch up, here we go. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> this is the report template and I'll do a couple of things. One, just sort of give you a brief overview. This is not a very long document. It's uh, just the template itself. Uh, spills over to six pages, and, and obviously it'll it can be more uh, once you begin to use it. Uh, but it's really a structure. We recognize that uh, these projects are all unique. Uh, in fact, uh, I don't think uh, there have been two projects the same or, 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 or that that similar that have come through so far that have been funded out of the hundred million dollars. So uh, we understand that, but uh, this provides guidance on how to how to prepare these reports. So just walking through the report uh, first, uh, if there is a uh, drawing, an image, a blueprint, something that uh, ties the report to the actual project, uh, you may want to insert that here in the optional area. Uh, list the project name, the street address, the zip code, that's very important, the month, the date, the year that the report is done. 
prepared for uh, the client name, the owner's name, uh, or the financing entity, uh, whoever you're doing the work for, if you're an engineer or contractor. And then here, uh, your information, the individual's name that's prepared the report, and then the company's name. So the cover page. Table of contents, and we'll work through this a little bit by bit. So uh, really five sections, executive summary, utility characteristics, the facility overview and baseline, uh, detail on the proposed pace improvements, and then really the technical qualifications of whoever it is that is preparing, preparing the report. So going into number one, the executive summary, <clears throat> uh, broken down to, into a couple of pieces. So the first one, 1.1, 1 .1, uh, project narrative. And you'll see this uh, repeat several times in the structure where we say a uh, concise description of overall project. So what we're looking for here are sentences, not paragraphs. Uh, the numbers and the tables, uh, you know, certainly are going to speak for themselves, but oftentimes don't tell the whole story. So uh, we're looking for sufficient narrative to tie those pieces together. Things like, you know, the history of the building, uh, the use of how the how the property is was used, is being used, the square footage. Uh, going through the bullets here, uh, you know, the baseline calculations and approach. Uh, the proposed improvements, the savings and payback, and anything else that you think is relevant. Again, this is uh, something that an independent third party is going to look at. So the clearer and more concise it is and supported uh, it is, uh, the quicker a review it's going to be. So then the project summary table 1.2, a pretty standard approach here where <clears throat> by the ECM, and ECM is a, an energy conservation measure, WCM is a water conservation measure. Uh, however many of those there are, uh, list those, a brief description of what it is. It could you know, be as simple as HVAC, lighting, pumps, motors, fixtures, whatever. Uh, the cost, the projected cost, sum that at the bottom. The estimated useful life of each measure, uh, that typically is going to come from uh, the product manufacturer where it could come from an independent source uh, means or something like that, uh, and and uh, be prepared to uh, to justify or to support you know where you get that useful life number because that's something that the engineer the ITPR is going to be looking for, and then total and this is a weighted average we're looking for if it's multi measure so weighted by uh, cost the relative cost of each measure uh, in the project. Uh, next, energy and water savings, operational savings if there are any. Uh, sometimes there are. Uh, quantifiable operational savings, oftentimes that's a gray area. Uh, so things that would qualify as operational would be if you have an aging chiller system that has a, you have a, you have a maintenance contract, for example, uh, and that's an established cost over say one, two, three, five years, the new equipment uh, is, not going to, is not going to require that maintenance contract. So that's a cost that goes away. That's something that is a more quantifiable operational savings that could be added here. And then carried out total savings in the sum. So that's that's really kind of the, the matrix of summary. The next piece, 1.3, the project economics, looking at the project investment, this would be the total cost of the measures themselves. Uh, if you know the to calculate the, the information on the PACE financing term, uh, this would include soft costs, things like uh, uh, closing fees, legal engineering. You may not know that, and uh, so that's okay. But uh, if you have that information, list that. Uh, the total projected savings over the financing term, the savings to investment over the financing term, which is a simple calculation. So the project economics. Uh, next piece, uh, utility characteristics. So again, concise narrative description. These are sentences, not paragraphs. And what we want to see here are who are the utility providers for energy and water, depending on the measures themselves. What are the rates? Uh, is there uh, escalation, rate escalation that is being proposed as part of the calculation? And then the, uh, any other relevant information, again, to, to support the case. A summary table here, uh, electricity, gas, water, wastewater. There may be thermal uh, and utility provider and then the rate per unit. The next section, 3.0, uh, this is the baseline. So again, sentences uh, to describe 
uh, the existing baseline condition of the building or the facility. So how it's being used, the square footage, anything else that's relevant. Then the energy baseline by ECM could be one, could be many, uh, depending on the scope of the project. So for lighting, we're looking for things like watts per square foot, the efficiency rating of what's of, uh, the lamps that are there, run hours, HVAC, efficiency rating of run hours, domestic hot water, efficiency rating of that equipment, and other, uh, other uh, pumps, motors, and controls. So uh, anything uh, there uh, to support the energy baseline for the measures that are being proposed. And then water baseline, uh, same, same, same approach. Uh, there you're looking at things like fixtures, irrigation, uh, wastewater, uh, depending on the provider, it could be a separate line item. Uh, some uh, wastewater providers simply take the uh, inverse of the water consumption and charge that. Wastewater can be a big savings number. Uh, so that's important uh, to, uh, to keep in mind. And then uh, anything else, uh, uh, cooling tower, uh, water makeup, uh, things like that. So this is, again, not an exhaustive list, but uh, ideas of the types of things that would be there. Section four. Uh, the proposed pace improvements, and this is really, really kind of the heart of it all. So again, a concise description of the improvements in a narrative form, uh, sentences, not paragraphs. This is the same table that was at the top. So really, uh, you don't have to do two. Uh, this is uh, just really, you could do it here and then carry it up to the executive summary. And then for each one, uh, explain, you know, how it'll improve efficiency. Again, uh, this, is, this is a very brief description. Uh, talk about the supporting savings approach and calculations, and then the estimated useful life uh, with the basis and the source. And, and you can see these repeat. So this is just an example of a project that would have three energy conservation measures and two water conservation measures. So this sort of structure, if you follow this, will uh, again, make it easier and more uniform for an independent third party to review. And then finally, in section five, uh, this is uh, where you would put your information, uh, your qualifications, and uh, and also uh, obviously key contact information. The independent third party uh, will most likely be in touch to get more details on the report. Any questions that that may arise, uh, justifications, uh, how you are uh, sourcing information, cost data, uh, maybe may come up those sort of things. So it's it, it, there's some it's an iterative process. Uh, once the independent third party takes a look at this. So that's the quick overview of the uh, format, the template for the energy and water assessment report. And again, this is something new. Uh, this has not been uh, on, the, on the website or available before, and uh, hopefully we'll have it up there uh, in short or uh, next week if, if things work out. So uh, I'm gonna switch back now. and wait for it to catch up, and here we go. <clears throat> so that's the new report template. Next, <clears throat> the independent third party review. Uh, last month, when we had the T5 series, uh, Keith Reel, who co-presented with me, went over this in detail, and I'm not going to repeat all of what was covered then because that's on our recorded uh, webinar that's available on our website and via YouTube, but I am going to go through and highlight a few things that are very important and uh, re-review those, if you will. So first of all, uh, consistent with state law, the ITPR, uh, a Texas professional engineer uh, with energy or water experience, and uh, one of the following. Uh, we need to, to know that that ITPR has uh, relevant experience, uh, so certifications under ASHRAE, under AEE, Building Commissioning, uh, ICP, and you know five years of relevant experience. So uh, not, not every engineer can do this work, uh, but uh, those uh, with experience uh, can provide these services. As PACE has grown in the state, what we've seen is a uh, network of ITPRs that have developed. And so 
where initially there were none because uh, before PACE, there was not the need for such a thing. Uh, now we, we have a, a number around the state that can do work anywhere, and we need to build out that network even more as PACE uh, continues to expand statewide. The other thing an ITPR um, must be aware of is, is a conflict of interest issues. So an arm's length relationship between the reviewer, uh, the ITPR, and the party that prepared the savings report can't be the same person. So again, the entity or the person that prepares the initial report, that could be a contractor, uh, it can be a service provider, it could be an engineer, uh, but it has to be a different person, different entity uh, than the ITPR. And the ITPR has to attest to that, and they'll ultimately have to stamp and seal uh, documents. So uh, that's that's the independence uh, criteria uh, for uh, the independent third-party reviewer. And what the ITPR review looks for is, is two main things. Uh, the before, because these are the eyes and the ears of the PACE program in the field. Uh, a review of the baseline calculations, the savings projections, and key to this is a site visit, uh, initial site visit uh, with documentation and photos. Uh, these are representative photos of the baseline conditions, uh, not necessarily uh, photos of data plates and things like that, not that level of detail. But, uh, you know, if you're replacing, uh, you know, uh, lighting or chillers, uh, pictures, uh, photos of what was there before uh, to support that for the file. And then after uh, the ITPR returns, there's verification that the project was installed and operating as intended. And again, takes after site visit photos, and those are for the files as well. So two key, two key pieces. So the before savings review, what the ITPR is looking for, first of all, they'll meet the qualifications. Uh, they've reviewed the savings and baseline. <laughs> they've reviewed the useful life uh, that are proposed, that's proposed to the equipment. Again, uh, be prepared to support that, however you've come up with your projections. And then ultimately, they'll determine if it's a qualified project. And then that's what we call overall the project verification certificate phase. The uh, uh, ITPR certifies that they've uh, performed the site visit, they've conducted this work, and they've concluded that uh, the reductions that are proposed are realistic and reasonable. Uh, these are uh, opinions, these are engineering assessments, and then that the period of the assessment does not exceed the useful life of the project, which is key for PACE qualifications. The project certification, uh, again, going back to what's required under state law, that this is a qualified project, that it is a, it is a permanent improvement to fix to fix to real property. Uh, we've had the question before, what's not a permanent improvement? Uh, generally speaking, anything that can be plugged in uh, that does not require an electrician or a plumber to hardwire it or plumb it in, uh, that is not permanent. Uh, but things that do hardwire in and do plumb in are, are considered permanent. And then that they uh, also, of course, that they are intended to decrease water energy consumption or demand. So the before savings review is completed, then it moves into project construction phase. Project gets completed, and then the installation verification phase starts. This is what we call the after review. And here, the ITPR signs a statement of compliance and submits a cover letter and report. The statement of compliance, uh, they in that they certify, again, they meet the qualifications, they don't have a conflict of interest, that they have performed the site visit supported by photos, and that they are determining that the improvements have been completed and operating as intended. Again, these are professional opinions. We rely on professional engineers <clears throat> licensed in the state of Texas to ensure that projects uh, are, are done, done, done correctly. To help with this process, uh, we have forms developed. Uh, if you look at the website in the area here that's circled in red, uh, under the resources and documents, and there's a number of resources, but if you open up and expand the independent third-party reviewer forms, uh, there are the two things, the before uh, review of savings calculations that I just talked about, uh, and then also the after. And 
uh, those are both forms that are then signed by the ITPR. There's also a savings summary worksheet that we've provided to, to help out with, uh, with, with doing the calculations. So what's next? A uh, couple of things. First, uh, as I mentioned, the energy and water assessment report will finalize that. And uh, I think we'll wind up uh, publishing that as a fillable PDF. Uh, it'll be posted on the TPA website. Uh, and uh, we'd like to have your input on this to see if uh, we think it's probably a good balance, not uh, probably too structured, but, but, uh, but also provides enough information, enough content in a consistent way for efficient reviews. So uh, let us know if uh, this is working, if it's not working, and uh, we can certainly you know, entertain uh, changes and, and, uh, and, and updates and improvements for sure. So that's coming immediately, like in the next uh, next week or two. Uh, the other thing that's happening from a technical standpoint is that going back to Keeping Pace in Texas, periodically, uh, Keeping Pace in Texas and those working groups convene to, to update the standards, the guidance standard for, for Pace. Uh, things change. Uh, we aren't locked in time. We haven't been since 2013 when all this started. So they will be meeting uh, this summer and uh, June through August to review the existing technical standards and uh, determine if updates are needed. Uh, if there are changes and updates, uh, then we will follow uh, that uh, with our uh, program documents and guidelines at Texas Pace Authority. So that's all happening and may impact the technical side of these projects uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks and then through the summer. In terms of resources, uh, Websites you should be available, you should be familiar with. The main one, Texas Pace Authority. Here, everything I've shown you is available there. Uh, program guide and technical standards. That's the direct link. Uh, again, you'll get these slides uh, emailed to you, as well as uh, uh, there'll be a recording. And then uh, upcoming events and training. We will continue to do the T5 training events uh, like this webinars. Uh, once things uh, open back up more and there's more in-person training that uh, that folks are involved in, uh, we'll go back and and uh, and begin doing that again as well uh, to complement the online training. Today, I didn't go into any case studies, uh, but clearly there have been quite a few. Those are all posted on the website. You can take a look at you know how these projects uh, are structured, what the savings are, uh, what type of projects, who the owners are and what the benefits have been. Then also, uh, outside of Texas PACE Authority, uh, SECO, the State Energy Conservation Office, has a page on PACE that is a, an excellent resource there as well. On technical standards, uh, a, a little bit a deeper dive there uh, through online resources is there. There's we have webinar. We have a webinar that uh, is there under resources and education. Uh, on our website. The arrow on the left points to where you can find that. And if you click on that hyperlink, the technical standards page, uh, you'll get this. And this is a, uh, it's about an hour long, I think it's a little over an hour uh, webinar, recorded webinar on technical standards. It's also broken down, as you can see below, into five different parts. So, uh, for instance, I think part one is about five minutes. And so if you just want to see part one or part two or part three, uh, you, you don't have to necessarily uh, review and watch the whole thing. It's segmented, so it's a little easier for users to access that way. So that's an excellent resource as well. With that, uh, thank you for attending today. Uh, I'll leave this up. You can submit questions to me directly. Uh, Dub Taylor at TexasPaceAuthority.org. Uh, we will answer the questions and post the Q and A's on the website. And those will be distributed to the attendees. Uh, if you registered today and you attended today, uh, next week you will get uh, via email a PDH certificate uh, for an hour. Uh, you'll get a survey. Please fill those out again. Those those are very helpful uh, for us. You'll get a copy of the slides, a uh, PDF of the slides, and then also a link uh, to this recording. Uh, all of those will be be emailed next week. So with that, I've, uh, we're we're done for today. A few minutes early, so I'll give you 
uh, 15 minutes back of your afternoon, and uh, we appreciate your attendance. Thank you.